my dreamers, it's Sky here and welcome back to the channel or welcome to the channel if you're new. Today we're going to be continuing on our March color along. We've been working in Rita Berman's Europe book and the page that we have been working on is the little bakery shop here. If you haven't watched the first few parts, definitely feel free to go do so. I think this will be the part that wraps it all up. We don't have too much left, so I'm excited to get in there and get it finished. And yeah, I'm going to keep this intro super short. So with that being said, we're going to zoom in and get going. All right, so in this part, I'm assuming we're gonna be able to finish everything. We should have more than enough time. I think this part will actually be a little bit shorter than the hour and a half time that I usually give my videos, but we'll see. Um, sometimes things take longer than I think. But um, since we're planning on finishing the page in this part, I think the way we need to do it is to finish basing everything here. That way, in around the end, when this stuff is pretty much dry, we can come in and add any um, colored pencil over top if we feel we need to and you know that kind of thing so I think that's where we're gonna start um yeah I have all of my swatches out but I didn't grab the pencils so I should probably do that but of course I already have a cat at the door so just give me one moment okay so first things first let's tackle this vent here so I'm just gonna add some of the mustard in here I think mostly around the edges especially since I kind of colored into this with the blues and that might kind of muddy up this color. And if it does, I'll just go back over it with um, some white later on. But I'm just going to add a little bit of the mustard in there. A little bit of the golden yellow. Maybe kind of more on either end and around the edge maybe. And then the sun yellow. Going over everything left that's white. And then again, because I'm a little bit um, concerned about letting this dry, normally I would base a bunch of things and then go in and activate it. But I think in this case, we're just going to color one thing, activate it, color the next thing, activate it kind of thing. So let's go ahead and activate this. I'm gonna definitely clean my brush off after I go over the blue that I have in there. Hopefully you don't, but sometimes it's a little bit hard to control these pencils. Okay, so there is the vent done. So next we have the kitty. And I'm hoping this doesn't seem like, like strange. I'm hoping this works out. I'm not too worried because if it doesn't work out the way I'm intending it to, we can always go over with pencils. So it's not the worst case scenario. But we'll see what happens. I don't know if I have actually used this color yet. Do I still have it in here? Okay, I have not. So I'm going to grab my dark purple here. And I'm going to keep this mostly as like a shadow color. So I'm going to pop a little bit of this in behind his leg here. I'm going to go really light, I think. We don't need a whole lot of it. I want to keep him a little bit on the lighter side if possible. A little bit underneath his necktie here. Okay, and then if you notice here, I'm leaving a little bit of a white highlight here. I'm going to add some white highlights on the front, um, the, the 
rear, the front, oh my gosh, the front and back legs that are facing us. So like this, these two would be more towards the, the bakery and these two are kind of facing more towards us. I am going to put a white highlight on those, but I'm just gonna use my Posca pen to do that because I don't really have much room. Realistically, I could do the same here and I will probably still have to anyways, but this is just gonna be a little bit of a reminder to myself that I'm gonna need that. And then I did kind of bring this up a little bit and then I'm just fading out from there. So it just gives them a little bit more shading, makes them a little bit more three-dimensional, brings them to life a bit. Um, and then the only other color I had picked out for him is the Payne's Gray, which is gonna be the more predominant color on him, hopefully. So I am going to go over what I just colored with the Payne's Gray as well, and I'm gonna bring it out a little bit I am going to kind of fade out to a really, really light, almost non-existent color of this. We can always drag that color out a little bit more when we activate it as well. So these ones I'm just going to color in lightly. Okay, so there's what that's looking like. And then I do want to add a little bit of kind of like a pinkish color. I'm gonna grab the fuchsia here. And I'm just very lightly gonna go in on its ears here. I don't know if this is a girl or a boy. To me, it's a boy, but it could be whatever you want. Okay, and then with that, let's go ahead and activate. I'm gonna actually activate the pink area first. And then I'm gonna start in the lighter areas and work my way into the shadows. I'm gonna grab some of that lighter color and kind of bring it up a little bit here. Go. <sighs> All right, and then we're just going to tackle the back legs here. My uh, water brush put out quite a bit more water than I was wanting it to, so that might shadow through. I don't think it's bled through, but that might shadow through a little bit. I just have to be careful. Um, okay, so the next we're gonna want the green aquamarine. So I'm gonna do this bow and the bird here, and I'm gonna kind of do them the same as this bow on the planter. So kind of following along the same, I'm just gonna go in on the parts that I think are gonna be a little bit shadowed. 
And I'm going to pop this in there and then just fade it out a little bit. Kind of like that. And then same thing for the bird. That is how she is going to look there. We are going to be adding yellow a little bit later, but um, we added the yellow after everything had dried on the, the, the planter bow. So I'm just going to do the same thing just to keep it cohesive. I don't know if it would look any different if we added the yellow now. I feel like it might because then they would mix together, whereas we just put the yellow over top of this color over there. The blue is already dried. So yeah, just in case, we're gonna play it a bit safer. So I'm just gonna start in the areas that have no color and then work my way into the blue and then just bring it back into those areas a little bit to help fade it out. Super pretty color. All right, and then lastly, we have the sign. I have a bunch of colors here that we're gonna be trying to add into here, um, which I think I'll use for the sign as well. Let's see, not all of them obviously, but let's see. Let's maybe use the oak. I'm pretty sure we've used that one before. Ah, there it is. Okay, so let's start with that. Let's see, I'm gonna, this is a pretty dark color, so I'm gonna add this in along this back piece here. This one too. Let's add a little bit in here as well. Maybe just a little bit kind of coming out from underneath her tail. I think I would also like to use the willow. I don't think we've used that one, have we? No. So I'm gonna bring this out from the oak, I think, and have the sign mostly with this color. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of an extra layer to these back pieces here. And just a little bit around here. And up here. And maybe just along the bottom of this part. I think 
that's probably okay. Let's darken up just along the right side of this piece, just to add a little bit of extra interest. And then same here, just kind of riding along that edge. There we go. I'm liking that. Um, I think we'll tackle these little pieces when we do the rest, but let's, let's take the baked earth. So we've used that one, I think. Yeah, for the flowers. Let's see if I can find that. So I'm just going to lightly go around just the background. I'm not going to, I'm not going to color the items on the sign quite yet. Just going to add a little bit of extra color on the top and bottom corners, I think. And then I'm going to grab the golden yellow and I'm going to go over that as well. So we're kind of mixing these colors together because I want a little bit more of a yellowed tone for this. Hopefully it works out the way it looks in my head, but we'll all see. It, it might be very very hit or miss and hopefully the hit part, but we'll see, see what happens. Let's do the outside of the sign first. I'm just going to start in the lighter area and then work my way into the darker bits. Cleaning off my brush before trying to help blend them or before starting on a new area. Okay, and then we'll work on this area. There we go. And then since I have the panes gray, one thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a little bit off the tip and just put it in along here. Fade it out a little bit, just because I think I forgot that little triangle piece and it looked a little bit funny. But also actually, while I have it, that'd be a good color for the, the cup and saucer. So maybe let's, just grabbing a little bit from the tips. There, I like that. I think that looks pretty good. All right, so now that we've got a base on everything, let's go ahead and try to add little bits in here. I'm a little bit worried about this. I kind of like how it looks just as is right now. I don't know if doing this is going to add or distract. <sighs> I am a little bit weary, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Should we just do a small part and see? 
The only problem is, is as soon as we start, I don't know if we can do a small part. Um, I'm very, very torn by this. Let's... You can always add sparkles, so maybe let's try with some of the colors. Um, I'm going to try with the tangerine, maybe. So, I would hold off for now. Let's just see what this looks Well, you'll already know. You'll know if we did it or not, because you'll have seen the picture. I'm going to add a little bit of color here, and then I'm going to back over with some water. And I think it looks okay. Just picking up the very faintest of color. probably good for the tangerine. Let's switch to Matter Brown. I believe we've used that one as well too. Just a little tap on the tip and then adding that color in there, but very desaturated. That way it's just like a little tinge of color. We don't want a whole lot. Red oxide is next. So far, so good. I think, I think this is turning out okay. The colors definitely are very muted, which I think is good. Like, you can't really differentiate between some of them, unfortunately, both good and bad, but...
Okay, Willow is next. So since this is mostly the color that we used for the sign, I think I'm going to kind of stick this more to the shelves. Now that my brush is pretty much out of water, which is a good thing. I don't want to add a whole bunch more to it, but we need a little bit. I think that's all I want to do for the willow. We've used the oak already, haven't we? I could have swore I grabbed this one already. Well, I know we've used it. I don't know if I'm going to use it here. I feel like I already have. But... Um, okay, the last color I have for like the browns is the mustard. I do want a little bit of this. I want to add a little bit of this to the croissants. I'm a bit more of a yellowed hue. I'm going to add a little bit of this to this, these baguettes. Let's do the top of this, whatever this thing is, and then add a little bit of yellow in some of these pieces. Okay, I think that looks good. Oh, can't forget the croissant out here. Okay, so now we just have a few other colors. So, I'm gonna use the teal green. I don't think I've used this one, so I need that pencil out. So a little leaf here. Maybe those up there too, why not? Okay, maybe like that. Don't need a whole lot. Okay, deep violet. I don't think I've used that one either. So that one's in my pencil case, got it here. Do this one here a little bit darker. Mm. Couple of those. And then lastly, we'll come in with the fuchsia. So I'll do this one here. We'll do the rose. These little bits here. And then the top of this cupcake out here. I think that's pretty much it for the window. I think I'm actually pretty glad that we did that. I'll have to look at it before and after, but I definitely feel like that adds a lot more to it. Um, I do actually just want to bring out the oak a little bit here. Let's see if I can find it. A lot of the barrels for some of these colors look the same, so 
sometimes it's really hard to find it. I could have swear we've used it. Oh yeah, we did. It's right there. Okay. I'm just going to grab a little bit of the oak and I'm going to add a little bit of shadow to this here. Just a little bit up top. There we go. It's a little better. It's looking a little flat. I didn't really like that. Yeah. Okay, this stuff here should be dry enough. We should be able to go in with the, what was it? The um, Sherbert Lemon. I don't think that we activated this, did we? I'm gonna have to look. Normal. Okay, I guess we didn't let it dry. We just put the sherbet lemon in while it was still wet. So we'll kind of have to see if we think it needs to be activated. I'm just gonna pop this over top here. Oh, how beautiful is that? I do think we should activate it a little bit. I think I changed my mind. <laughs> Maybe not. I activated it on the kitty cat, but I'm not activating it on the bird. I like that softer look. I'm gonna try and use my paper towel to soak up some of that color. Yeah, it it went green. I don't really like that. Hmm. Okay, lesson learned. That's okay. All right, so now we pretty much just have finishing details, which I am super excited for. And I, I don't even think there's a whole bunch that I want to do. Um, the problem with going back and forth so much like this is I don't exactly know where we need things, but um, I'm going to get a little bit organized here and maybe pull a couple pencils and then we'll continue going. Okay, I think before we go in with um, our pencil, I'm just gonna grab my Posca pen here and let's, we've pretty much done, I think all of like the details up top that I want, but I definitely haven't really done much on the bottoms. So I want to start adding some of our little sparkles and stuff here. So let's start with these little glowy bits from the lights. I'm just going to bring these out with the white. So right now I have all of the ones she has in there. And then we are going to definitely add some more. Do that on this side as well. We're also just gonna highlight this iron bar here. So I'm kind of doing a little bit of a broken line kind of going down it. Couple extra little small ones in there. OK, 
Okay, also add some little marks to the bricks. We did that up top. We haven't done that at the bottom yet. So just kind of doing some little horizontal, kind of like scratchy looking marks. It just adds some extra interest to them. It makes them look really neat. I like I like the way it looks. I think I need to mix this up a little bit though. I think that looks good. I'm just going to bring back the fuchsia here. And again, just grabbing a little bit of color off the tip. Just going to give a little bit of color to this, the top of this cupcake and then inside this heart here. And then we'll do the oak, same thing. Just a little bit on the wrapper. And then lastly, golden yellow, same thing for this little piece here. There we go. I should make sure you guys can see everything first, but you didn't miss much. I don't know how dry these are, like how much in other places I want to do it. I feel like this should be pretty good. We're not going to be adding a whole bunch anyways. Make sure we can see. So still with my Posca pen, I'm going to go and circle these. Because that's what we did up top too, so we want them to match. Okay, and then let's add some white highlights in here too. Just kind of picking out some areas. Kind of outline this rose, of course, pull that out a little bit. Little bits of white add so much to this window. I'm loving that. Probably because the colors are so dull and muted, so it really shows up. But I don't know. The, the effect is just super interesting. It's a little bit different than what I expected, but not in a bad way at all. Yeah, I think that's good there. Mm, let's see. I don't really think there's anything else that needs white. I do want to actually... Let's 
just gonna make some straight across lines here. Just like that maybe. Okay, and I think with that we can do our finishing touches on these. They should be dry enough, I think. I'm gonna start in with the dark umber. I'm gonna focus on the blue parts of this vent to try and hide that. And then I'm basically just gonna outline the inside. And just kind of lightly blend this color in over all of it to darken it up a bit. Just kind of like that. You want to add a little bit of dark contrast to this bow, especially since I um, activated it. It's, it's crazy the difference between activated and unactivated. It's just absolutely wild. Lesson learned. That does help tone it down a little bit, but the color is still quite not there. We might be able to get away with putting some white. I might try that. Um, for the bird, I don't want to add too much here, but just a little bit, maybe like underneath its wing. Maybe down at the bottom here. And just a little bit on the bottom feathers. Maybe just some up here too. Underneath its eye. I'll bring that back out. There we go. Sleepy little bird. Super cute. I might add a little bit more of the um, the yellow to that, actually. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to stick to the fact that I think this is called sorbet. It says, I've been calling it sherbet. There's no R, so it'd be sherbet. Which, I mean, that could be it too, but I think it's sorbet. I've heard that. Never heard somebody say sorbet. So. Just going to darken up the yellow just a little bit here. Make it more prominent. There. Yeah. Mm, let's do the white before I forget. I'm going to grab that out. I know I've used it before. And I'm just gonna, if you didn't do this part, if you caught my mistake there, you don't have to do this. But if you did, and I'll try to warn you so you don't. Oh, that worked really good actually. We can just use this white. It definitely mutes it back down. It's almost not noticeable that it was like super freaking yellow. I'm actually gonna go a little bit on the, the yellow on the bird here too to knock it back a little bit. It's just funny because we just made it stand out. I wanted more of the yellow, but I do want it a little bit more muted. Okay, I think that looks good. Um, I would like to actually go back with the dark umber. I wasn't actually done with that. I thought I was. I want to add a little bit to the croissant here. Just a little bit to the coffee and a little bit to the sign. these darker areas for sure and then we can just add a little bit of like additional texture using this i'm just going to add a couple like extra lines with this just like that looks a little bit more rustic a little bit more to it and then i think the last thing we have really is the Cat. I'm gonna bring that dark umber back one more time because I lied. Uh, let's see, dark umber. I'm gonna go really, really lightly just on this cupcake mold here. Just along the lines, a little bit on the bottom. There. Now we are done with it, I promise. So just the cat. So I'm gonna go in with the 90% cool gray in where we want those shadows. And I'm gonna keep it like a really bumpy texture. So I'm just gonna very lightly go in with this. It's 
So yeah, again, this is just where we have the shadows. Um, let's actually add a little bit of more shadow around his head here. Okay. Next is the 70%. So I'm just going to bring this out lightly from that darker color we just put in here. And then our last color is the 30% cool gray, which I'm just going to add in the areas where we haven't added pencil. I'm just going to keep lightly going over to kind of bring that texture out. It'll not so much make the cat looks like it has fur, obviously, because we really didn't put that much effort into it, but it will give it a little bit of a texture so it doesn't look super smooth either. So a little bit of a cheat code there. Um, let's actually bring back the 70. Let's just add a little bit on this mug and the plate. There. And then we'll go back in with our Posca pen. Let's add some white highlights to these. So bring that bent out a little bit. Add a little bit of a highlight to the ribbon on him. Bring the whites back out on his eyes. Do his whiskers white? Yeah. They're very fine and delicate though, so it's a bit tricky. Some little white bits up here as if he has whiskers coming out of his ears too, as most cats do. And then we can add just a couple little dots on him as well. I'm going to try to avoid the black spots on him. But... Let's add a little bit of a glow on him. I don't know if I like this one here. I'm going to scratch that off. Yeah. I'm going to, one way we can fix that, I'm just going to, I'm not going to grab the swatch, but I'm going to grab my 90% cool gray and I'm just going to put that in over top. There we go. Problem solved. There, it looks pretty cute. Uh, bird, same thing. Let's go ahead and add 
I think I clogged my pen up here. Is that a little bit of white? See on the eye, on its head. Add some little dots here and there. Pretty cute, I think. We can add a little bit of white on this as well. Kind of the same as we did with the, um, which is that the dark umber I think we used here. So I'm just gonna add some white lines in around it. Be a little bit more minimal with the white lines on these back pieces though. And then yeah, just a little bit of white maybe alongside the writing here. Add some little dots. A little bit on the croissant, a little bit on the cupcake. A little bit in the chocolate. Look how much that just changes it. Like we hardly did any work on the sign at all, I feel like, and it just, it looks awesome. I might be completely biased. I, I know I am. I am completely biased, but that's besides the point. <laughs> okay, is there anything else? I'm going to redefine this white line here a little bit that we had for the door. And I do realize that the lines up top for the windows don't match the ones for the windows down here. That is by design. Um, it's kind of like a, an opposites thing. I don't want to forget anything, but I don't feel like there's really much else. I want to add some kind of like sparkly bits to the bottom of the building. Hopefully we've been able to see everything. I don't think I was fully in view, unfortunately. I don't want to zoom out too much. I want you guys to be able to really see what we're doing, but... Maybe I should have zoomed out a little bit more. Okay, so let's add some little, little sparkly bits to the building here. Don't want them everywhere, but I do want them in a few places, make them a little bit noticeable. Maybe like that. Uh, did we add white lines anywhere? I don't think we did, so let's do that. So I'm gonna add a little bit of a white line here. This pen really likes to clog up. I'm just going to pick up some areas to add some white lines to. I think that's actually about it. I don't want to add too many. We don't have as much um, like three dimensional building, I should say. I don't really know how to explain it, but like for the top, you can tell it's not flat. It's got bits that poke out kind of like a little bit of a border. Down here, it's about the same, just not as much. Like I feel like most of it's flat. I feel like this part would like jut out maybe a little bit. This part juts out from there maybe a little bit. I don't exactly know what that's called. There is a name for it. But I couldn't tell you right now, honestly. You'll just have to take my word for it. Then I know what I'm talking about and hopefully I do. Okay, so I think the last order of business is sparkles. So, 
do we want them? And where do we want them? Yeah, so I'm unsure if I want to sparkle up the flowers and the lights. Just do the lights, just do the flowers. I don't really know. I feel like probably the lights. I think we should maybe leave the flowers. So maybe let's do that. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab my stickles and my, and a couple Q-tips. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take um, just a piece of paper and I'm gonna pour my stickles onto it. I'm gonna use the Q-tip to pick them up. Okay, and I'm just using this kind of yellow colored stickles. It's like a really light yellow. I'm gonna start up here. I'm just gonna start popping little bits of the glitter in the lights, just kind of dabbing them in there. Gonna add a little bit up here. So I'm mostly gonna add it to the centers of the lights. I'm gonna kind of tap it around, try and distribute it to other places. And then when my Q-tip seems like it's not really full of glitter, I'm just gonna tap it around to these top bits here to add just a little bit there. I'm gonna go back to the lights and kind of redistribute the clusters of the stickles. Hopefully that makes sense. Sorry, bumped you there. I'm gonna add a little bit of stickles kind of like around the glowy part of the lights here where we have a whole bunch of white um, sparkles and stuff. bring that up a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna add some stickles in on this part here too. And same thing, just kind of around where the yellow bits and sparkly bits are for the light. And then let's see how that's looking. Okay, some of these upper ones I can hardly see it on, so I'm gonna add some more. You add as much as you want. I like I want to keep mine a little bit more sparse, very limited. If you want to go all out and stickle the crap out of each light, you do that. There's no right or wrong when it comes to stickles. I am adding a little bit more to these lights though because I do feel like they just they need that extra pop. And I think I'm also going to add like little bits kind of around the lights up top too.
just going to keep adding it until I'm happy with it. I love the romantic feel of this page, honestly. It's it's just gorgeous. Let's see here. I think I think we're done. I'm gonna just zoom out a little bit. Let's get a full on view of the page. I am not gonna lie, this turned out nothing like how I imagined. I'm it's one of those pages that's going to grow on me because I just, I love it, but I'm also not completely happy with it at the same time. And I think it's just because the colors turned out a little bit different than I was envisioning. Like I just, I seen a lot more pastel colors, but at the same time, our light effect wouldn't have worked as good if we had used more lighter colors for the backgrounds. So I think, I think it looks good. I think it happened for a reason and hopefully you guys love this. I definitely do. Don't get me wrong. I absolutely love this. So yeah, hopefully I didn't miss anything. I think we got it all. I'm just going to remove that and let's give you a look at the glittery goodness here. Hopefully. It's really hard to see. It's very subtle. You can kind of see it. I literally just kind of have it all over the place, but yeah, I think that's it. This has been such a crazy ride during this color along. I think this is the worst time I've ever had trying to find time to film a color along. I, I know I said last month that every time I tried to film, something would come up, but this month was literally super trying. Like it is, right now as I'm filming this, it is March 9th. I am already almost 10 days into the month and I'm just finishing this. It's been ridiculous, just way too much going on. And honestly, I pray to God that the next 20 days in this month are super chill. All right, I think that's it for this page. If you guys enjoyed this color along, if you could give it a thumbs up, I would extremely appreciate it. It helps these videos get recommended to other people who might enjoy them and in turn helps me out. So I really appreciate that. If you participated in this, I would love to see your finished page. So you can go ahead and use the hashtag dream in color along, or you can just send it to me. I'm on Facebook and Instagram, or you can email it to me if you are not on social media. I do have my email in the channel info. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this and hopefully I will have something for you guys sooner in April. I'm so sorry that this color along came out later than intended, but I really appreciate your guys' patience and grace with me. You guys are literally the best. I absolutely love all of you. And I think I'm going to leave it here because I stink from work and I need a shower. <laughs> all right, guys, as always, take care and hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye.